Chapter 22 Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pithor near the river in his native land. Balak said, A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people, because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the country. For I know that those you bless are blessed, and those you curse are cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the fee for divination. When they came to Balaam, they told him what Balak had said. Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will bring you back the answer the Lord gives me. So the Moabite princes stayed with him. God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent me this message. A people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I will be able to fight them and drive them away. But God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people, because they are blessed. The next morning Balaam got up and said to Balak's princes, Go back to your own country, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite princes returned to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balak sent other princes, more numerous and more distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said, This is what Balak, son of Zippor, says. Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I will reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered them, Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now stay here tonight as the others did, and I will find out what else the Lord will tell me. That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, she turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat her to get her back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between two vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it, so he beat her again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat her with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you, because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared her. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Arnon border at the edge of his territory. 
Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? Well, I have come to you now, Balaam replied. But can I say just anything? I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam went with Balak to Kiriath Huzoth. Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep and gave some to Balaam and the princes who were with him. The next morning, Balak took Balaam up to Bamoth Baal, and from there he saw part of the people. Chapter 23 Balaam said, Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did as Balaam said, and the two of them offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet with me. Whatever he reveals to me, I will tell you. Then he went off to a barren height. God met with him, and Balaam said, I have prepared seven altars, and on each altar I have offered a bull and a ram. The Lord put a message in Balaam's mouth and said, Go back to Balak and give him this message. So he went back to him and found him standing beside his offering with all the princes of Moab. Then Balaam uttered his oracle. Balak brought me from Aram, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, he said, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? From the rocky peaks I see them. From the heights I view them. I see a people who live apart and do not consider themselves one of the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and may my end be like theirs. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, Must I not speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Come with me to another place where you can see them. You will see only a part, but not all of them. And from there, curse them for me. So he took him to the field of Zophim on the top of Pisgah, and there he built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering while I meet with him over there. The Lord met with Balaam and put a message in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and give him this message. So he went to him and found him standing beside his offering with the princes of Moab. Balak asked him, What did the Lord say? Then he uttered his oracle. Arise, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot change it. No misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. There is no sorcery against Jacob, no divination against Israel. It will now be said of Jacob and of Israel, see what God has done. The people rise like a lioness. They rouse themselves like a lion that does not rest till he devours his prey and drinks the blood of his victims. Then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all nor bless them at all. Balaam answered, Did I not tell you I must do whatever the Lord says? Then Balak said to Balaam, Come, let me take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God to let you curse them for me from there. And Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor overlooking the wasteland. Balaam said, Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Chapter 24 Now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not resort to sorcery as at other times, but turned his face toward the desert. When Balaam looked out and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he uttered his oracle. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of one whose eye sees clearly. 
the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are opened. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel! Like valleys they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their seed will have abundant water. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. They devour hostile nations and break their bones in pieces. With their arrows they pierce them. Like a lion they crouch and lie down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse them? May those who bless you be blessed, and those who curse you be cursed. Then Balak's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them these three times. Now leave at once and go home. I said I would reward you handsomely, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell the messengers you sent me? Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord. And I must say only what the Lord says. Now I am going back to my people. But come, let me warn you of what this people will do to your people in days to come. Then he uttered his oracle. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor. The oracle of one whose eye sees clearly. The oracle of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheth. Edom will be conquered. Seir, his enemy, will be conquered, but Israel will grow strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Then Balaam saw Amalek and uttered his oracle. Amalek was first among the nations, but he will come to ruin at last. Then he saw the Kenites and uttered his oracle. Your dwelling place is secure. Your nest is set in a rock. Yet you Kenites will be destroyed when Asher takes you captive. Then he uttered his oracle. Ah, who can live when God does this? Ships will come from the shores of Kittim. They will subdue Asher and Eber, but they too will come to ruin. Then Balaam got up and returned home, and Balak went his own way. Chapter 25 While Israel was staying in Chittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman, right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw this, he left the assembly took a spear in his hand and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites. For he was as zealous as I am for my honor among them so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. Therefore tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood. 
because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Selu, the leader of a Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Cosby, daughter of Zer, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, Treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them, because they treated you as enemies when they deceived you in the affair of Peor and their sister Cosby, the daughter of a Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of Peor. Chapter 26 After the plague, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, Take a census of the whole Israelite community by families, all those twenty years old or more who are able to serve in the army of Israel. So on the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, Moses and Eleazar the priest spoke with them and said, Take a census of the men twenty years old or more, as the Lord commanded Moses. These were the Israelites who came out of Egypt. The descendants of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, were through Hanuk, the Hanukite clan, through Palu, the Paluite clan, through Hezron, the Hezronite clan, through Carmi, the Carmite clan. These were the clans of Reuben. Those numbered were 43,730. The son of Palu was Eliab, and the sons of Eliab were Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. The same Dathan and Abiram were the community officials who rebelled against Moses and Aaron, and were among Korah's followers when they rebelled against the Lord. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them along with Korah, whose followers died when the fire devoured the 250 men. And they served as a warning sign. The line of Korah, however, did not die out. The descendants of Simeon by their clans were through Nemuel, the Nemuelite clan, through Jamin, the Jamanite clan, through Jachin, the Jachinite clan, through Zerah, the Zerahite clan, through Shal, the Shalite clan. These were the clans of Simeon. There were 22,200 men. The descendants of Gad by their clans were through Zephon, the Zephonite clan, through Haggai, the Haggai clan, through Shunai, the Shunai clan, through Oznai, the Oznai clan, through Eri, the Eri clan, through Eridai, the Eridai clan, through Arelai, the Arelai clan. These were the clans of Gad. Those numbered were 40,500. Ur and Onan were sons of Judah, but they died in Canaan. The descendants of Judah by their clans were through Shelah, the Shelanite clan, through Perez, the Perizzite clan, through Zerah, the Zerahite clan. The descendants of Perez were through Hezron, the Hezronite clan, through Hamul, the Hamalite clan. These were the clans of Judah. Those numbered were 76,500. The descendants of Issachar by their clans were through Tola, the Tolaite clan, through Pua, the Puite clan, through Jashub, the Jashubite clan, through Shimron, the Shimronite clan. These were the clans of Issachar. Those numbered were 64,300. The descendants of Zebulun by their clans were through Sirid, the Siridite clan, through Elon, the Elonite clan, through Jaliel, the Jalielite clan. These were the clans of Zebulun. Those numbered were 60,500. The descendants of Joseph by their clans through Manasseh and Ephraim were the descendants of Manasseh, through Makir, the Makerite clan. Makir was the father of Gilead. Through Gilead, the Gileadite clan. These were the descendants of Gilead. Through Iezer, the Iezerite clan. Through Helak, the Helakite clan. Through Asriel, the Asrielite clan. Through Shechem, the Shechemite clan. Through Shemida, the Shemidaite clan. Through Hefer, the Hepharite clan. Zelophehad, son of Hefer, had no sons, he had only daughters whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. These were the clans of Manasseh. Those numbered were 52,700. These were the descendants of Ephraim by their clans. Through Shuthala, the Shuthalahite clan. Through Beker, the Bekerite clan. Through Tehan, the Tehanite clan. These were the descendants of Shuthala. Through Aaron, the Aaronite clan. These were the clans of Ephraim. 
Those numbered were 32,500. These were the descendants of Joseph by their clans. The descendants of Benjamin by their clans were through Bela, the Belaite clan, through Ashbel, the Ashbelite clan, through Ahiram, the Ahiramite clan, through Shufam, the Shufamite clan, through Hufam, the Hufamite clan. The descendants of Bela through Ard and Naaman were through Ard, the Ardite clan, through Naaman, the Naamite clan. These were the clans of Benjamin. Those numbered were 45,600. These were the descendants of Dan by their clans, through Shuham, the Shuhamite clan. These were the clans of Dan. All of them were Shuhamite clans, and those numbered were 64,400. The descendants of Asher by their clans were through Imna, the Imnite clan, through Ishvai, the Ishvai clan, through Beriah, the Beriahite clan, and through the descendants of Beriah, through Heber, the Heberite clan, through Malkiel, the Malkielite clan. Asher had a daughter named Sirah. These were the clans of Asher. Those numbered were 53,400. The descendants of Naphtali by their clans were through Jaziel, the Jazielite clan, through Gunai, the Gunite clan, through Jezer, the Jezerite clan, through Shillam, the Shillamite clan. These were the clans of Naphtali. Those numbered were 45,400. The total number of the men of Israel was 601,730. The Lord said to Moses, The land is to be allotted to them as an inheritance based on the number of names. To a larger group, give a larger inheritance, and to a smaller group, a smaller one. Each is to receive its inheritance according to the number of those listed. Be sure that the land is distributed by lot. What each group inherits will be according to the names for its ancestral tribe. Each inheritance is to be distributed by lot among the larger and smaller groups. These were the Levites who were counted by their clans. Through Gershon, the Gershonite clan. Through Kohath, the Kohathite clan, through Merari, the Merarite clan. These also were Levite clans, the Libnite clan, the Hebronite clan, the Malai clan, the Mushite clan, the Korahite clan. Kohath was the forefather of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, a descendant of Levi who was born to the Levites in Egypt. To Amram she bore Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. Aaron was the father of Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they made an offering before the Lord with unauthorized fire. All the male Levites, a month old or more, numbered 23,000. They were not counted along with the other Israelites because they received no inheritance among them. These are the ones counted by Moses and Eleazar the priest when they counted the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Not one of them was among those counted by Moses and Aaron the priest when they counted the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. For the Lord had told those Israelites they would surely die in the desert, and not one of them was left except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Chapter 27 The daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. They approached the entrance to the tent of meeting and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly, and said, Our father died in the desert. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives, and turn their father's inheritance over to them. Say to the Israelites, If a man dies and leaves no son, turn his inheritance over to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, Give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan, that he may possess it. This is to be a legal requirement for the Israelites, as the Lord commanded Moses.
Then the Lord said to Moses, Go up this mountain in the Abiram range and see the land I have given the Israelites. After you have seen it, you too will be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was. For when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Mirabah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God of the spirits of all mankind, appoint a man over this community to go out and come in before them one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and the entire assembly, and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority, so the whole Israelite community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out, and at his command, they will come in. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord instructed through Moses. Chapter 28 The Lord said to Moses, Give this command to the Israelites, and say to them, See that you present to me at the appointed time the food for my offerings made by fire, as an aroma pleasing to me. Say to them, This is the offering made by fire that you are to present to the Lord, two lambs, a year old without defect, as a regular burnt offering each day. Prepare one lamb in the morning, and the other at twilight. Together with a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a quarter of a hin of oil from pressed olives. This is the regular burnt offering instituted at Mount Sinai as a pleasing aroma, an offering made to the Lord by fire. The accompanying drink offering is to be a quarter of a hin of fermented drink with each lamb. Pour out the drink offering to the Lord at the sanctuary. Prepare the second lamb at twilight, along with the same kind of grain offering and drink offering that you prepare in the morning. This is an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. On the Sabbath day, make an offering of two lambs a year old without defect, together with its drink offering and a grain offering of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath, in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. On the first of every month, present to the Lord a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With each bull, there is to be a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, a grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. And with each lamb, a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. This is for a burnt offering a pleasing aroma, an offering made to the Lord by fire. With each bull there is to be a drink offering of half a hin of wine, with the ram a third of a hin, and with each lamb a quarter of a hin. This is the monthly burnt offering to be made at each new moon during the year. Besides the regular burnt offering with its drink offering, one male goat is to be presented to the Lord as a sin offering. On the fourteenth day of the first month, the Lord's Passover is to be held. On the fifteenth day of this month, there is to be a festival. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Present to the Lord an offering made by fire, a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With each bull prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Prepare these in addition to the regular morning burnt offering. In this way, prepare the food for the offering made by fire every day for seven days as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. It is to be prepared in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work.
On the day of first fruits, when you present to the Lord an offering of new grain during the Feast of Weeks, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Present a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. With each bull, there is to be a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, with the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat to make atonement for you. Prepare these together with their drink offerings, in addition to the regular burnt offering and its grain offering. Be sure the animals are without defect. Chapter 29 On the first day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. As an aroma pleasing to the Lord, prepare a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. These are in addition to the monthly and daily burnt offerings with their grain offerings and drink offerings as specified. They are offerings made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma. On the tenth day of this seventh month, hold a sacred assembly. You must deny yourselves and do no work. Present as an aroma pleasing to the Lord a burnt offering of one young bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old all without defect. With the bull, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With the ram, two-tenths, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the sin offering for atonement and the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Celebrate a festival to the Lord for seven days. Present an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With each of the thirteen bulls, prepare a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. With each of the two rams, two-tenths, and with each of the fourteen lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the second day, prepare twelve young bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the third day, prepare eleven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fourth day, prepare ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fifth day, prepare nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the sixth day, prepare eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the seventh day, Prepare seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the numbers specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the eighth day, hold an assembly and do no regular work. 
present an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a burnt offering of one bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, the ram, and the lambs, prepare their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. In addition to what you vow and your free will offerings, prepare these for the Lord at your appointed feasts, your burnt offerings, grain offerings, drink offerings, and fellowship offerings. Moses told the Israelites all that the Lord commanded him. Chapter 30 Moses said to the heads of the tribes of Israel, This is what the Lord commands. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, but must do everything he said. When a young woman still living in her father's house makes a vow to the Lord or obligates herself by a pledge and her father hears about her vow or pledge but says nothing to her, then all her vows and every pledge by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her father forbids her when he hears about it, none of her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. The Lord will release her because her father has forbidden her. If she marries after she makes a vow, or after her lips utter a rash promise by which she obligates herself, and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her, then her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her husband forbids her when he hears about it, he nullifies the vow that obligates her or the rash promise by which she obligates herself, and the Lord will release her. Any vow or obligation taken by a widow or divorced woman will be binding on her. If a woman living with her husband makes a vow or obligates herself by a pledge under oath and her husband hears about it but says nothing to her and does not forbid her, then all her vows or the pledges by which she obligated herself will stand. But if her husband nullifies them when he hears about them, then none of the vows or pledges that came from her lips will stand. Her husband has nullified them, and the Lord will release her. Her husband may confirm or nullify any vow she makes or any sworn pledge to deny herself. But if her husband says nothing to her about it from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or the pledges binding on her. He confirms them by saying nothing to her when he hears about them. If, however, he nullifies them some time after he hears about them, then he is responsible for her guilt. These are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife and between a father and his young daughter still living in his house. Chapter 31 The Lord said to Moses, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the Israelites. After that, you will be gathered to your people. So Moses said to the people, Arm some of your men to go to war against the Midianites and to carry out the Lord's vengeance on them. Send into battle a thousand men from each of the tribes of Israel. So twelve thousand men armed for battle, a thousand from each tribe, were supplied from the clans of Israel. Moses sent them into battle, a thousand from each tribe, along with Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, who took with him articles from the sanctuary and the trumpets for signaling. They fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Among their victims were Evi, Recham, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. The Israelites captured the Midianite women and children and took all the Midianite herds, flocks, and goods as plunder. They burned all the towns where the Midianites had settled, as well as all their camps. They took all the plunder and spoils, including the people and animals, and brought the captives, spoils, and plunder to Moses and Eleazar the priest and the Israelite assembly at their camp on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds who returned from the battle. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. They were the ones who followed Balaam's advice. 
and were the means of turning the Israelites away from the Lord in what happened at Peor, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now kill all the boys, and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. All of you who have killed anyone or touched anyone who was killed must stay outside the camp seven days. On the third and seventh days, you must purify yourselves and your captives. Purify every garment as well as everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, This is the requirement of the law that the Lord gave Moses. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, lead, and anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire, and then it will be clean. But it must also be purified with the water of cleansing, and whatever cannot withstand fire must be put through that water. On the seventh day, wash your clothes and you will be clean. Then you may come into the camp. The Lord said to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest and the family heads of the community are to count all the people and animals that were captured. Divide the spoils between the soldiers who took part in the battle and the rest of the community. From the soldiers who fought in the battle, set apart as tribute for the Lord one out of every five hundred, whether persons, cattle, donkeys, sheep, or goats. Take this tribute from their half share and give it to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part. From the Israelites' half, select one out of every fifty, whether persons, cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, or other animals. Give them to the Levites, who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The plunder remaining from the spoils that the soldiers took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 women who had never slept with a man. The half share of those who fought in the battle was 337,500 sheep, of which the tribute for the Lord was 675, 36,000 cattle, of which the tribute for the Lord was 72, 30,500 donkeys, of which the tribute for the Lord was 61, 16,000 people, of which the tribute for the Lord was 32. Moses gave the tribute to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part, as the Lord commanded Moses. The half belonging to the Israelites, which Moses set apart from that of the fighting men, the community's half, was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 people. From the Israelites' half, Moses selected one out of every 50 persons and animals as the Lord commanded him and gave them to the Levites, who were responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. Then the officers who were over the units of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, went to Moses and said to him, Your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. So we have brought as an offering to the Lord the gold articles each of us acquired, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted from them the gold, all the crafted articles. All the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that Moses and Eleazar presented as a gift to the Lord weighed 16,750 shekels. Each soldier had taken plunder for himself. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord. Chapter 32 the Reubenites and Gadites, who had very large herds and flocks, saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were suitable for livestock. So they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest and to the leaders of the community and said, Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eliela, Sebam, Nebo, and Beon, the land the Lord subdued before the people of Israel, are suitable for livestock, and your servants have livestock. If we have found favor in your eyes, they said, let this land be given to your servants as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. Moses said to the Gadites and Reubenites, Shall your countrymen go to war while you sit here? Why do you discourage the Israelites from going over into the land the Lord has given them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to look over the land. 
After they went up to the valley of Eshkol and viewed the land, they discouraged the Israelites from entering the land the Lord had given them. The Lord's anger was aroused that day, and he swore this oath. Because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of the men twenty years old or more who came up out of Egypt will see the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not one, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he made them wander in the desert forty years, until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight was gone. And here you are, a brood of sinners, standing in the place of your fathers and making the Lord even more angry with Israel. If you turn away from following him, he will again leave all this people in the desert, and you will be the cause of their destruction. Then they came up to him and said, We would like to build pens here for our livestock and cities for our women and children. But we are ready to arm ourselves and go ahead of the Israelites until we have brought them to their place. Meanwhile, our women and children will live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every Israelite has received his inheritance. We will not receive any inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan, because our inheritance has come to us on the east side of the Jordan. Then Moses said to them, If you will do this, if you will arm yourselves before the Lord for battle, and if all of you will go armed over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out before him, then when the land is subdued before the Lord, you may return and be free from your obligation to the Lord and to Israel. And this land will be your possession before the Lord. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Build cities for your women and children, and pens for your flocks, but do what you have promised. The Gadites and Reubenites said to Moses, We, your servants, will do as our Lord commands. Our children and wives, our flocks and herds, will remain here in the cities of Gilead. But your servants, every man armed for battle, will cross over to fight before the Lord, just as our Lord says. Then Moses gave orders about them to Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, and to the family heads of the Israelite tribes. He said to them, If the Gadites and Reubenites, every man armed for battle, cross over the Jordan with you before the Lord, then when the land is subdued before you, give them the land of Gilead as their possession. But if they do not cross over with you armed, they must accept their possession with you in Canaan. The Gadites and Reubenites answered, Your servants will do what the Lord has said. We will cross over before the Lord into Canaan armed, but the property we inherit will be on this side of the Jordan. Then Moses gave to the Gadites, the Reubenites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the whole land with its cities and the territory around them. The Gadites built up Dibon, Ataroth, Aror, Atrothshofan, Jazer, Jogbaha, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Heron as fortified cities, and built pens for their flocks. And the Reubenites rebuilt Heshbon, Eliela, and Kiriathaim, as well as Nebo and baal Meon, these names were changed, and Sibma. They gave names to the cities they rebuilt. The descendants of Makir, son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, captured it, and drove out the Amorites who were there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Makerites, the descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, captured their settlements and called them Havoth Jair. And Noba captured Kenath, and its surrounding settlements, and called it Noba after himself. Chapter 33 Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by divisions under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. The Israelites set out from Ramesses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. They marched out boldly in full view of all the Egyptians who were burying all their firstborn, whom the Lord had struck down among them, for the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. 
the Israelites left Ramesses and camped at Succoth. They left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. They left Etham, turned back to Pihahiroth to the east of Baal Zephon, and camped near Migdal. They left Pihahiroth and passed through the sea into the desert, and when they had traveled for three days in the desert of Etham, they camped at Merah. They left Merah and went to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there. They left Elam and camped by the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped in the desert of Sin. They left the desert of Sin and camped at Dofka. They left Dofka and camped at Elush. They left Elush and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Rephidim and camped in the desert of Sinai. They left the desert of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hateava. They left Kibroth Hateava and camped at Haziroth. They left Haziroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Rimon Piraz. They left Rimon Piraz and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Rissa. They left Rissa and camped at Kihalatha. They left Kihalatha and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Hareda. They left Hareda and camped at Machiloth. They left Machiloth and camped at Tehath. They left Tehath and camped at Terah. They left Terah and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmona. They left Hashmona and camped at Mosiroth. They left Mosiroth and camped at Benijaakon. They left Benijaakon and camped at Horhagidgad. They left Horhagidgad and camped at Jotbatha. They left Jotbatha and camped at Abrona. They left Abrona and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh in the desert of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor on the border of Edom. At the Lord's command, Aaron the priest went up Mount Hor, where he died on the first day of the fifth month of the fortieth year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. Aaron was a hundred and twenty-three years old when he died on Mount Hor. The Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev of Canaan, heard that the Israelites were coming. They left Mount Hor and camped at Zalmona. They left Zalmona and camped at Punan. They left Punan and camped at Oboth. They left Oboth and camped at Aya Abarim on the border of Moab. They left Ayam and camped at Dibon Gad. They left Dibon Gad and camped at Almon Diblotheim. They left Almon Diblotheim and camped in the mountains of Abarim near Nebo. They left the mountains of Abarim and camped on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. There on the plains of Moab, they camped along the Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth to Abel Shittim. On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you, destroy all their carved images and their cast idols, and demolish all their high places. Take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. Distribute the land by lot, according to your clans, to a larger group, give a larger inheritance, and to a smaller group, a smaller one. Whatever falls to them by lot will be theirs. Distribute it according to your ancestral tribes. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. And then I will do to you what I plan to do to them. Chapter 34 The Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites and say to them, When you enter Canaan, the land that will be allotted to you as an inheritance will have these boundaries. Your southern side will include some of the desert of Zin, along the border of Edom. On the east, your southern boundary will start from the end of the Salt Sea, cross south of Scorpion Pass, continue on to Zin, and go south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it will go to Hazer Adder and over to Asmon, where it will turn, join the Wadi of Egypt, and end at the sea. Your western boundary will be the coast of the Great Sea. This will be your boundary on the west. For your northern boundary, run a line from the Great Sea to Mount Hor, 
and from Mount Hor to Lebohamoth. Then the boundary will go to Zedad, continue to Ziphron, and end at Hazer Enon. This will be your boundary on the north. For your eastern boundary, run a line from Hazer Enon to Shephon. The boundary will go down from Shephon to Riblah on the east side of Ain and continue along the slopes east of the Sea of Kinnereth. Then the boundary will go down along the Jordan and end at the Salt Sea. This will be your land with its boundaries on every side. Moses commanded the Israelites, Assign this land by lot as an inheritance. The Lord has ordered that it be given to the nine and a half tribes because the families of the tribe of Reuben the tribe of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. These two and a half tribes have received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan of Jericho toward the sunrise. The Lord said to Moses, These are the names of the men who are to assign the land for you as an inheritance, Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, and appoint one leader from each tribe to help assign the land. These are their names. Caleb, son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Judah. Shemuel, son of Amihud, from the tribe of Simeon. Elidad, son of Kislon, from the tribe of Benjamin. Buckai, son of Joglai, the leader from the tribe of Dan. Haniel, son of Ephod, the leader from the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Kemuel, son of Shiftan, the leader from the tribe of Ephraim, son of Joseph. Elizaphan, son of Parnak, the leader from the tribe of Zebulun. Paltiel, son of Azan, the leader from the tribe of Issachar. Ahihud, son of Shalomai, the leader from the tribe of Asher. Pedahel, son of Amihud, the leader from the tribe of Naphtali. These are the men the Lord commanded to assign the inheritance to the Israelites in the land of Canaan. Chapter 35 on the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to give the Levites towns to live in from the inheritance the Israelites will possess, and give them pasture lands around the towns. Then they will have towns to live in, and pasture lands for their cattle, flocks, and all their other livestock. The pasture lands around the towns that you give the Levites will extend out 1,500 feet from the town wall, Outside the town, measure 3,000 feet on the east side, 3,000 on the south side, 3,000 on the west, and 3,000 on the north, with the town in the center. They will have this area as pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge to which a person who has killed someone may flee. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, you must give the Levites 48 towns together with their pasture lands. The towns you give the Levites from the land the Israelites possess are to be given in proportion to the inheritance of each tribe. Take many towns from a tribe that has many, but few from one that has few. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, select some towns to be your cities of refuge, to which a person who has killed someone accidentally may flee. They will be places of refuge from the avenger, so that a person accused of murder may not die before he stands trial before the assembly. These six towns you give will be your cities of refuge. Give three on this side of the Jordan and three in Canaan as cities of refuge. These six towns will be a place of refuge for Israelites, aliens, and any other people living among them, so that anyone who has killed another accidentally can flee there. If a man strikes someone with an iron object so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or if anyone has a stone in his hand that could kill, and he strikes someone so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or if anyone has a wooden object in his hand that could kill, and he hits someone so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If anyone with malice aforethought shoves another or throws something at him intentionally so that he dies, or if in hostility 
he hits him with his fist so that he dies. That person shall be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. But if without hostility, someone suddenly shoves another or throws something at him unintentionally, or without seeing him, drops a stone on him that could kill him, and he dies. Then, since he was not his enemy, and he did not intend to harm him, the assembly must judge between him and the avenger of blood, according to these regulations. The assembly must protect the one accused of murder from the avenger of blood, and send him back to the city of refuge to which he fled. He must stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the accused ever goes outside the limits of the city of refuge to which he has fled, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the city, the avenger of blood may kill the accused without being guilty of murder. The accused must stay in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest may he return to his own property. These are to be legal requirements for you throughout the generations to come, wherever you live. Anyone who kills a person is to be put to death as a murderer, only on the testimony of witnesses. But no one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Do not accept a ransom for the life of a murderer who deserves to die. He must surely be put to death. Do not accept a ransom for anyone who has fled to a city of refuge, and so allow him to go back and live on his own land before the death of the high priest. Do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land, and atonement cannot be made for the land on which blood has been shed, except by the blood of the one who shed it. Do not defile the land where you live and where I dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. Chapter 36 The family heads of the clan of Gilead, son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and the leaders, the heads of the Israelite families. They said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give the inheritance of our brother Zelophehad to his daughters. Now, suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes. Then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of the tribe they marry into. And so, part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelites comes, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry, and their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our forefathers. Then at the Lord's command, Moses gave this order to the Israelites. What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands for Zelophehad's daughters. They may marry anyone they please, as long as they marry within the tribal clan of their father. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from tribe to tribe, for every Israelite shall keep the tribal land inherited from his forefathers. Every daughter who inherits land in any Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan, so that every Israelite will possess the inheritance of his fathers. No inheritance may pass from tribe to tribe, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelophehad's daughters did as the Lord commanded Moses. Zelophehad's daughters, Mala, Tirzah, Hogla, Milka, and Noah, married their cousins on their father's side. They married within the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's clan and tribe. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave through Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho.